I said I wasn't going to do this. Come see what I've done. Hi guys and welcome back to Homestead Rewind. I know that I said that I wasn't going to go crazy on the chicken thing, but I just can't help it guys. The other day I took a trip to Nixa to a chicken farm. Yes, you heard it. I wasn't going to get a whole bunch of chickens, but I couldn't resist this. Let me show you. These guys are my new olive eggers. I only got five. You should be proud of me. My eggs are going over so well that I decided that I would throw a little bit of color into my eggs to make them extra special to all of my very loyal egg buyers. I've learned quite a bit from my YouTube people and this time around it's going to be a whole lot easier because I've learned some tricks that make raising baby chicks a lot less messy than I used to. Now you can see that I use the same system as my chicken coop only I used a one and a half inch pipe instead and the bottom can pivot so that as they get older I can turn it up. Right now it has to be sideways I don't know if you can see that. It has to be sideways for them to reach that. But it's working out really, really well. It keeps their nest box really clean. You can see I just slit holes and tape that feeder on with duct tape. Good old duct tape. Every farm needs it. <laughs> I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't find my zip ties. And I was too anxious to get them going. But this is working just fine. And another trick that I learned from watching YouTubers is to get that water up off the ground. Why my common sense before didn't tell me that, I don't know, but that makes a big difference in keeping the whole nest box dry. I talked about how I was going to try to start some seeds indoors, and you can see that I have all my seeds. They're all set up here on and sorted out according to when I plan on planting them. And I got my little stand there. All we could find in our little Walmarts was a shoe rack, so everything's slanted, which works out great for everything except for the seeds. They, I have to prop them up underneath there to hold them up for now. If we have to go out of town at some point, we're going to try and look for a different kind of shelf. I planted these seeds last Friday. Today is Wednesday. And that's the same time I started my uh, sweet potatoes. And everything is just, I think they're just as anxious for spring as I am. One thing I've learned, and you guys seen me do this even last year, is I have forgotten what I planted. Don't think you're going to remember what you planted. You need to label what you've got in there. And I put, whether they are seeds that I saved for myself or where I got the seed from, just for my own uh, record. But... You can see that I have cauliflower coming up, cabbage coming up. The yellow tomatoes so far haven't come up. The rainbow heirloom tomatoes are starting to come up. And I've got quite a few of them already. I do have uh, one of the large uh, cherry tomatoes is popping through. And you can see that there are a couple other trying to. I have one little zinnia back there that's already coming up. That's pretty exciting. We're still waiting on the pansies. This is all pansies. Next week I plan on starting another seed tray. I just want to go slow so I don't overwhelm myself. I come about this pregnant onion because somebody in the campground was leaving and they didn't want to they didn't want to take it with them. So they knew me as the crazy jungle lady and brought it to me. But you can see that the babies are growing off of the onion and where they have fell off before they're starting to sprout up. So I need to get them out of there and get them transplanted so they can be their own plant. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it actually does bloom. I did not know that. I don't know a lot about this plant. I have read that it may have some medicinal value, but I don't know. And those are going to be, those are really cute little blooms on there. So I'm going to get that split up and potted. Another thing that is in a bad need of transplant is all these little baby aloe veras. I swear that pot, I don't know how it's holding them. And there can't be much dirt in there, so I'm going to get them all transplanted into solo cups. See if anybody wants to buy some from me. If not, we'll just grow more aloe vera. Okay, 
I need to get started. It's going to be tight quarters here in the camper. As you can see, it's snowy and muddy and cold outside. decided after getting into this that these smaller aloe beers like this I'm just going to put back in the pot and let them get bigger. I'm just now working on separating very gently and also this was very dry whenever I started working on it. I think that it being so dried out is helping to get these pulled apart easier. But the smaller ones I've decided I'm just going to put back in the pot and let them grow a little while longer. You can see that the aloe vera, they grow off of the main root that I planted originally. They're growing off of that. I'm just going to separate them out. All of them have a pretty good amount of root of their own. Some of them are really tiny. I want to talk about why I do these videos. It's important to me to inspire people that they can grow. And I'm making the point that even if you're in an apartment in town, you can still grow things. I'm in a camper here. And... While I'm just learning, I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm showing you how I'm doing it. You can adjust for your situation. I just want to encourage you that you can grow something no matter where you live. It's important to me that I inspire people the way that I get inspired. Everybody has to go about it a different way. We're not all the same. There's no right or wrong way. You have a plant, you have dirt, you have pot, you have water. You can grow something. It's true that I have space in the farmhouse, in that back room that's very well lit. But it's not a real big space. And it's only to hold me over until I can put my plants outside. The point is, I had to make do with what I had. I couldn't just run out and plant in my greenhouse that I don't have yet. Or no way to heat the small one. But I still can grow stuff. And everybody just has to figure out their way that they have to take. But you can grow. You can grow your own stuff. Not only am I planning on selling these plants just to make a little bit of income for the homestead to turn into something else, but this plant is a very valuable med medicinal plant. And it works really good on sunburns, I know. I've used it before for that. But I've been reading and hearing that you can actually ingest this. And at the campground, uh, I met a woman who talked about her sister who drank a glass. Uh, her, she's like 98 years old. And every, she said her sister every morning drinks a glass of aloe vera juice. Now, I'd have to read more into that to figure out what exactly that means. I don't think it means that she just peels her... Uh, squeezes out some juice or something. She said her sister swears by it. And she said that it actually comes from a great big uh, aloe vera plant. They live in California. And she said it comes from a great big aloe vera plant. But I didn't really have time to quiz her on how she got it into juice form. Maybe it's something for me to study in the future. Eventually, I hope to have my own compost. I hope to be successful in making large quantities of it. But as you know, we just got to the farm this year and they're just now starting to get our compost pile going. So I went to, it was our local Dollar General is where I got the potting soil. And I really kind of like this potting soil. It wasn't very expensive. But it seems like it's going to be really good, especially for these aloe veras. Look, little tiny ones. 
gently break them off. It's all about having the will to figure things out. I'm learning that that's the biggest takeaway from homesteading. You can't necessarily do it like everybody else because your situation is not like everybody else. And you just have to figure it out. Get the basic fundamentals and then figure it out from there. I'm learning as I'm showing you, so don't take anything that I do. <laughs> let's, let's get a disclaimer in there. Don't take anything that I do for being the way that it has to be done or even that it's the right way to do it. Hopefully you'll follow along with me and see what works for me and what didn't work for me. I'm just trying to show you that there are resources out there where you can teach yourself how to become more sustainable. Resources that I really wish I would have had 20 years ago. I love my YouTube family. So many of us were brought up in an era where people were moving to the city. They were getting more, leaning more towards convenience things. Money was plentiful. Jobs were plentiful. And hopefully they still will be. I can see how things can very quickly turn into a state of emergency. I mean, I've really lost the desire to go shopping. For one, I suffocate if I have to wear a mask. It's, it's a PTSD thing for me and it's hard for me to do. I, I do do it whenever I really have to, but if I don't have to go to town, I'm, I'm good with that and I'm good with not having to shop. And the only way to do that is to become self-sustainable. Just some things to think about. Okay, I got quite a few done there, but I still have, I bet in that pot there was probably a hundred aloe vera plants. I didn't count them. Um, all the smaller ones I put back in the pot and we'll let them grow a little while and see if anybody's interested in buying these. The sun has been out long enough now that it's warmed up finally. I'm looking at the thermometer outside and it says it's 44 degrees. So I'm gonna run down and check on my chickens, see if they need some fresh straw and if they've laid any new eggs. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video and will come back and join me for my next one. If so, don't forget to like on your way out and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can get my videos and ring that little notification bell next to it so that you get notified when I upload a video. I'm moving along pretty fast now. I've got lots of things going on, so hopefully I can keep up with them. <laughs> it's a little intimidating at times, but I hope to see you all again real soon. Until then, love and peace to everyone.